get you a name. How's it going there, YouTube? Coming at you with a video today. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to build your own distortion detector from anywhere from the price of free, if you have parts laying around, to maybe a handful of dollars, or if you want to spend, you know, 30, 40, 50 bucks on some, you know, nice equipment to actually build a legit uh, distortion detector. Hey, you can do that too. Uh, but if you have some spare parts laying around the shop, you can probably build one of these for free. Okay. A lot of people that are in car audio probably have some stuff laying around. You might just need to buy a capacitor, uh, whatever the case is, but uh, chances are you can get this done and knocked out for under 10 bucks. All right. So this is everything that I used to build my tweeter distortion detector so i have these waterproof speakers and i i can't tell you where to get them i've already had them here uh but they're made for actually like spas and jacuzzis uh, but they're 100 percent waterproof um once you seal them on on the back there's that foam seal that creates a watertight seal for your enclosure here but uh but yeah you can pick one of these up somewhere i'm sure online ebay amazon like that there's the model number there if you want to get the same one and then an actual uh, do-it-yourself ABS plastic uh, box here and it just screws shut with those four screws comes with a waterproof seal so you can put around the edge there to just make everything nice and waterproof I got a set of terminals here and I got my capacitor and the most important thing out of this is going to be your capacitor because with the wrong size capacitor uh, you're not going to get the results that you're looking for so the one that I determined to work best through lots of testing, uh, testing low powered amplifiers, testing high powered amplifiers, testing head units, um, is this one here. It's 400 volts, okay, which means it can handle a big 10,000, 15,000 watt amp. You can use a smaller capacitor if you're only going to be testing 1,000 watt amps or maybe your mid-range amps or testing head units. But if you're going to be testing like a 5, 10,000 watt amp, then you better get a big one like this, okay? 400 uh, volts and 3.9 microfarad. That's what I got here. Anything around that, you'll be good to go. Like I said, if you're going to be doing just smaller uh, tests on anything under, you know, a couple thousand watts, then you can get a smaller one. You don't need a 400 volt one. You can get a 10 volt one or 100 volts, okay? But uh, yeah, I got a bunch of them laying around, so it wasn't that big of a deal and it worked perfect for me. All right, so I got everything soldered together here. I want to note that I'm probably the worst solderer in existence, but uh, I got the negative of the speaker soldered to the negative terminal there. And I got the positive of the speaker terminal soldered to one side of the capacitor and the other side of the capacitor soldered to obviously the positive side there. All right, and there it is right there. My very first homemade distortion detector. All right, and obviously all I did was just drill a hole there with a hole saw, put the speaker in, drill a couple holes here, throw that in, right? I mean, very simple. And then I soldered the uh, connectors together on the backside and just reconnected everything together. Done. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so here is the test. I have my mini O-scope hooked up to the source that's gonna be getting a 40 hertz signal. And in my last video that I did, I have proven and verified that that is as accurate as a legit benchtop O-scope. If you haven't seen that video, check it out and you can see the sine wave clips at the exact same point without any lag or any uh, ambiguity. So this is legit. It is giving the proper clip signal when it does clip or showing the proper clip signal when it clips. And I also have my <laughs> version one next level full send tweeter clip detector. I'm going to create a cooler name than that, but uh, just kind of through this together and it works flawlessly and what's really great about this is you know you don't need it doesn't need to be powered you don't need a plug in to plug it in anywhere you just connect speaker wires from this unit to whatever you're trying to read and you can hear distortion distortion comes through when the signal starts to clip so this is just a fancy version of the tweeter method but I wanted to put something in a unit where I can, you know, take it with me on the go or uh, just on the fly check distortion and not have to worry about finding an outlet to plug in an O-scope or anything like that. So anyway, I thought this was pretty cool and no battery either. Just a complete uh, self-sustained device. All right. So let's go ahead and see uh, how this thing performs. And again, the speaker wires here, I just have connected to the speaker wires of the head unit. And the O-scope is monitoring the same speaker wires 
uh, for the 40 hertz sine wave. I'm gonna be playing a 40 hertz zero dB signal. Now, it's not gonna be blaring loud, okay? As soon as I turn up the volume and you see the signal clip, you're gonna start to hear sound come through the speaker. It's gonna be light. But as I turn the volume up more and more, all the way up until max, you're gonna hear it get louder, 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 and louder, right? That's hard clipping. If you wanna reach the point of just the threshold of clipping, then you wanna turn up the volume until you just slightly start hearing a buzz or a humming noise, okay? As dictated by the O-scope here. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm gonna start out with a clean signal. Again, 40 hertz, zero dB. Maybe, there we go. Okay, now you don't hear anything, okay? And you shouldn't. But watch what happens to the sine wave as it clips. Listen, uh, listen carefully. There it is, and look at the sine wave. A little more, even louder, even louder. There it goes. Pretty cool, huh? Let's try that again. <laughs> All right, so clean signal. Clip, and you can just start to hear it. Clean. Clip, clean, clip, hard clip. It works, woohoo! All right, so I got my setup here. I actually got my Benchtop O-scope hooked up to my amp. I got a 40 hertz sine wave playing there. I'm gonna be reading the bottom of it. Doesn't matter if you read the bottom or the top of it, uh, you're gonna get the clipping point at the same uh, mark there. I got my uh, next level tweeter, distortion custom detector there uh, everything hooked up to the amp and right now I've obviously as you can see the gain signal is not clipping and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and restart the track there and then I'm slowly going to start to adjust the gain upwards until we see clipping and hear it on the device now I already gave it a try and the signal starts to clip slightly it starts to get distorted it starts to clip uh, before there's audible noise but very very uh very negligible in all honesty uh you know the noise starts coming out uh right after you get to a clipping point so if i'm going to use this to tune a, a high powered setup like 10,000 watts then you can use it but what i would do is as soon as you hear the noise just back it off ever so slightly right kind of the same way when you set the smd dd1 right you turn it up until you see the red LED come on, the distortion uh, clipping detector, and then you just back it off a little bit. Same thing, right? It's the exact same concept. So you turn it up until you hear noise come through, and then you just back it off slightly until the noise is gone and you got a clean signal, okay? So let's go ahead and give this a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and press play here. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and turn this up. See the amplitude increasing. There we go. Hard clip. It's getting quieter, getting quieter. There we go. See that? Pretty cool, huh? Let me try that again. Okay, 40 hertz test tone is playing. Got the adjustment here. Going to slowly start turning it up. There we go. So yes, it does work. It, get, it it'll get you really, really close. But just like the DD1, same thing. You know, you, you turn it up until you get that indicator that you're clipping, or you get the sound coming through the speaker, and then you just back it off ever so slightly, and you should be good to go. Okay, verified with the oscope. So hope that helped add value to you guys. And again, you can build one of these fairly simple. Okay, so now here's why that actually happens. Why do you hear? 
distortion, but you don't hear the 40 hertz sine wave coming through, right? Well, a capacitor, it's basically acting as a bass blocker, right? Everybody knows that tweeters, um, you, you can buy bass blockers for them. Sometimes they have an inline capacitor to block the bass. And that's basically what you're doing, okay? Is you have an inline capacitor that is blocking the 40 hertz uh, sound wave from coming through. Okay, because it's not going to let the 40 hertz pass through. However, distortion, okay, has a different sine wave. It has a different frequency, okay? It's a higher frequency. So it will slip past the base blocker or slip past that capacitor. And that's when you know you've crossed that threshold because that 40 hertz sine wave, which you can audibly hear change, okay, when distortion comes in, it goes through the capacitor and actually starts playing through the speaker. So that's where you know that you're starting to get distortion. Very cool how it works. And what's really cool is, like I said, you can probably have this built for free if you have spare parts laying around. The biggest thing is the capacitor. You want to make sure you get the proper capacitor. All right, guys, well, I hope that video helped add value to you all. Gosh, the past couple videos that came out, I feel like I've been the uh, distortion Nazi, the clip commander, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. But, uh, you know, again, this is something that for me, uh, you know, I, I say it time and time again, gain is the most important thing that you're going to be setting when dialing in your system. So you got to know how to do it. And it's better to know how to do it more than just one way. You know, because let's say the only thing you're used to doing is using your DD1, using your DD1. That's all you've ever known, right? What happens if you're in a pinch and you broke it or you you ran out of a battery and you're in the middle somewhere of a show and no one has a nine volt battery and you know how are you going to set it, right? So it's good to have a couple other methods, maybe a mini-oscope tucked away somewhere or a homemade tweeter uh, detector like the one that I made in this video uh, to get you out of a pinch, right? If you if you don't trust your good old fashioned ears to detect that distortion. But uh, there's a lot of ways to do it. I've covered a lot of them over the course of my time here on YouTube to help out the community. So yeah, hope that helped. Make sure if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe, turn on those notifications so you don't miss how to take your ride to the next level. Let's get loud.